Okay, so in this last video, I'm going to talk about the inefficiency of monopoly. So we're going to define a concept called deadweight loss. Uh, deadweight loss. It's basically a way to measure the size of inefficiency of the monopolist. And uh, to be able to calculate it, we need uh, one consumer surplus. All right, and then two producer surplus. So I'm going to denote consumer surplus as CS, the producer surplus as, oops, PS, okay? And then there's a third notion, the total surplus, by the way, total surplus. It's uh, TS, and by definition, it's equal to consumer surplus plus, plus producer surplus. Okay, so what is the deadweight loss? Well, in order to calculate deadweight loss, you first have to calculate the total surplus in the competitive market, all right? And then you calculate total surplus in the monopoly, subtract them, the, the first one is gonna be bigger than the second one, so therefore this is gonna be some positive number. This is how we calculate deadweight loss. So what is the total surplus of the competitors? All right, so TSC is the total surplus of the competitive firm. Well, it is the consumer surplus on the competitive market plus producer surplus on the competitive market. All right, well, what about the total surplus on their monopoly? Well, it's the consumer surplus on their monopoly plus producer surplus on their monopoly. So the consumer surplus, producer surplus, all those will change and therefore total surplus, all those will change as we change the market structure, all right? And for that reason, the total surplus under monopoly and under competitive firm, they're not gonna be the same. Okay, so first thing first, maybe, what is consumer surplus? Uh, whether it's competitive or monopolist, doesn't matter. The consumer surplus is basically the difference between the consumer's willingness to pay and the actual price they pay. All right, let me repeat. The consumer surplus is the difference between the consumer's willingness to pay minus the actual price they pay. The producer surplus is the uh, difference between the, the, the actual price the seller receives minus the producer's willingness, the, 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 the price that the sellers are willing to sell. So therefore, by that definition, the consumer surplus is always the area between the demand curve and the price line. And the producer surplus is the area between the price line and the supply curve. All right. So one thing that is very critical, the willingness to pay. It's some things like as a consumer, I am willing to pay for something if I buy it. All right. So it's, it's kind of a measurement of utility. And it, the, the, the willingness to pay will materialize, I'm going to get utility, only if I purchase the good. If I don't purchase the good, the willingness to pay will never materialize, and therefore, the consumers will never drive any consumer surplus if they do not make any purchase. Same for producers, the sellers. The sellers will never uh, receive surplus if they do not make a trade. So therefore, the Remember, I said the area between the demand curve, the price line, okay. But then, which of those customers and the producers, the sellers make trade is also important. Hopefully, that's going to come clearer when I talk on this graph. So, what is the consumer surplus and the producer surplus on this graph? Remember, this is the basically the, the graph that we compare the monopoly and competitive market. So the marginal cost curve, the demand curve, marginal revenue of the monopolist. This is the price for the competitive firm. This is the output for the competitive firm. And this is the output for the monopoly. And this is the price for the monopoly. So for competitive firm, I think I will need a second graph because I really don't like to draw it on the same thing. Um, so the, the, the consumer surplus in a competitive market is the area between the demand curve and the price line. 
all right so all this triangle is the consumer surplus on their competitive what about the producer surplus well here again think of the marginal cost curve as the producer um, supply curve so therefore this well it's not really triangle because the marginal cost is convex triangle like area is the producer surplus and therefore the total surplus is this tri triangle like it's not exactly triangle uh, uh, area all right and so this is the total surplus so if you remember our discussions in intermediate micro one total surplus is maximized in a perfectly competitive market that's what you learn so the total surplus is like the size of the cake all right so the, each market which is represented by a demand curve and the supply curve each market is actually generates a cake all right um, if trade occurs so this cake is like you know the consumers call it consumer surplus the producers call it producer surplus or kind of profit well it's going to be split between the consumers and the producers the competitive equilibrium does not necessarily mean they're going to split equally but it says the entire cake will be consumed by the consumers and the producers unless the government intervenes like tax price ceiling price floor those type of things can actually disturb the market and cause inefficiency if you remember well in the monopoly it's another um, uh, uh, way of disturbing the market so what happens in the monopoly i'm going to draw the monopolies consumer surplus monopolies producer surplus but i am tempted to draw a new graph or alternatively let's just you know skip those things but it leaves some sort of areas shaded sort of gives us idea what the consumer surplus producer surplus were all right so here is the competitive equilibrium price here is the monopoly price here is the quantity okay so now I'm going to calculate mono uh, consumer surplus, producer surplus under monopoly. Again, by definition, the consumer surplus is the area between the demand curve and the price line. So it is straightforward and in, I'm going to use the black color. So this area is the uh, consumer surplus of the monopoly. Okay well what about the producer surplus of the monopoly so it's not this entire area be careful remember the monopolist sells only this many outputs it means from this point on those products are never traded and so the surplus whether it's consumer or producer will never be materialized beyond this point because those products will never be traded they were traded in a perfectly competitive market i mean the sellers sell this much the buyers buy this much but in the monopoly sellers sell this much the buyers buy that much so those products the difference between these two are not traded all right so therefore there is no surplus out of those products so you have to ignore this area okay as we ignore this area after YC, when we calculated the competitive uh, markets as consumer and producer surplus. I don't know if that makes sense. So that means the producer surplus is the area between the price line and the supply curve restricted with the number of output which is traded. So therefore, this is the area for producer surplus. All right for monopoly producer surplus under monopoly so the question is well what about this uh now i wish i had a red color um i don't so what about this so let me use the blue color what about this area remember this area was actually shaded in the 
uh, 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 competitive market, but it's not under monopolist. So this blue area is basically the difference between total surplus of the competitive market and the total surplus of the monopoly. So this is the size of the dead weight loss. Okay. And this is the size of the inefficiency. Well, why is that? Well, this market, because of this supply and demand, all right, so the cake, remember my analogy, cake, supply and demand. I mean, for any market, the size of the cake is determined by the market supply and market demand curve. For example, um, cell phone market, airline industry, all right, or um, I don't know, uh, a, 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 an industry for um, painkillers or an industry for cars. So all of those industries have different uh, sizes of cakes, all right, and those cakes are basically determined by the supply and the demand of those markets. If demand is bigger, the size of the cake is definitely bigger. If the supply is bigger, again, probably the size of the cake is bigger, all right? So therefore, the supply and demand makes the size of the cake better or smaller. What happens is that this cake will be completely consumed, this triangle-like area, remember, in a competitive market. Some goes to consumers, some goes to producers, not necessarily equal, but there's gonna be no uh, cake left on the table. In the monopoly, however, some of this cake, potential cake, goes to consumers, some goes to producers. I mean, the consumers don't get money, but kind of you can think of consumers keep some money in their pocket, right? Those customers are willing to pay very high, but actually they're not paying that high. So they keep some of the money in their pocket, in a sense. And that kind of the profit, in a sense. So the sum of the some part of the cake is consumed by consumers, some part of the cake is consumed by the producers, but some part of the cake are, neither con I mean, are not consumed by the sellers or the producers. Who does it consume by? Uh, well, no one. No one consumes this size of the potential cake out there. The monopolist obviously wants to get that uh, additional cake, uh, but because the monopolist is charging uniform price, right? I mean, if you decrease the price, you're going to decrease your profitability, remember? So you don't want to do that because at the end of the day, what matters is your profit, all right? So because of the uniform pricing uh, and, and profit maximization uh, sort of uh, uh, incentive, the monopolist leaves some part of the cake unconsumed. And that's the inefficiency of the market. All right. So if things are still fuzzy, that's partly because a few things, one of which in economics, efficiency doesn't necessarily mean that things are fair, right? Like we, we share 50-50. No, 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 no. If one guy gets the whole cake and the other guy gets nothing, that's an efficient way of sharing the cake. All right. So if the consumer surplus is full, I mean, the producer surplus, for example, if the producer surplus equals total surplus and the consumer surplus is zero, all right, that's actually efficient. All right. Clearly not fair, but it's efficient. All right. So efficiency has nothing to do with fairness. Be, be uh, clear about that. And then, um, yeah, again, it's like, the reason why the dead weight loss is there, because the monopolist is charging uniform price, I mean the fixed price. And because of this fixed price, in the next chapter, we're talking about um, uh, price discrimination. It's, it's a one way um, to, to actually extract the uh, surplus from here and increase the profitability of the firm. All right, I, I think it's an interesting chapter. So because of the uniform pricing, and because the monopolist would like to maximize this area, the profit, it just finds it uh, beneficial for itself to leave some cake unconsumed and left on the table. Okay, um, so we better do a numerical example, which is uh, what's coming up next, all right?